Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please ensure to like, share, and subscribe. And also click the bell notification in the top right hand corner to be made aware anytime I upload tutorials or videos to YouTube. All right, let's craft together. Hey guys, today we're gonna be making these nice um, earrings. They're gonna be um, made with both HTV and faux leather. And we're gonna make them in the shape of an apple with a heart in the middle, okay? So without further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Cricut Design Space. We have a blank canvas. And the first thing we're gonna do is click on images here on the left. And we're gonna look for an apple. So we're gonna find the apple that we wanna work with and click on search, which is your magnifying um, little icon here. And we're gonna find us a nice apple to work with. I really want one that has like, kind of like this, because that would be good for our little um, hole to go in to hold our apple. Let's see. I kind of like that one, it's cute. Oh, I like that one. Okay, let's go with this one. I think we're going to go with this one right here. Let me make sure that's the one I want. I'm not going to make this complicated, I promise. Yep, I think I'm going to go with that one. We'll go, go back up. Okay. So we're gonna take our apple and we're gonna click add to canvas here in the bottom right corner. And there we have our apple. So we're gonna open this up a little bit. Now, um, recently Cricut removed the little icons that used to sit um, here on the corners. So just to show you, you still have your rotation ability. I'm gonna duplicate this for just a second. Today would be nice cricket. Okay, I'm not sure why it's not duplicating. Let's try copy and paste. There's always more than one way to skin a cat. All right, so here we go. So when you click on the um, image, you still have the ability to rotate. All you have to do is hover your mouse over the little um, squares here and you're going to get the double arrow and all you got to do is rotate that baby okay and you can do that on in any side so all of them have the capability to rotate so you don't have to come back up here and rotate from here you can rotate from any one of the four corners okay if you need to change your sizing like right now you only have the ability to go up or down you can't go in or up um, so to speak. So all you have to do is just make sure you click on your image and go to lock proportions, which is between your width and your height, and click that little lock one time, and that's going to unlock your proportions, which used to be here on the bottom um, left corner. And now you have the ability to go in, out, however you want to do that baby, okay? And you also have the ability to just click here and just type in whatever size you want. Okay. Once you change your proportions, always go back up and lock it. Okay, relock it, and it's just one click to unlock, one click to lock it back. Okay, so that's that. All right. So now that we have our apple here, um, we are going to increase the size just for a moment, and we're going to go back to our image, images, and we're going to take a heart now. 
da -da -da -da, and click on the search magnifying glass. And we're going to find a heart that we want to put in the middle. And I kind of want to it's allowed these are full out there. Sound like somebody might have taken their um whatever those things are there's still enough of people's cars. Okay, let's take this heart right here. I think that'll be kind of cute. Or hmm, I'm gonna take both of them. So I'm gonna take both of these. I'm gonna click on both and select add to canvas, and then I'll decide which one I want to use. All right, so one came in large, one came in super small. Let's see what that looks like. Ba -da -da. No, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I kind of like that one. So that one is a bye-bye. All right, so we have our heart. Um, and so what we're gonna do, the heart is 3.319 in width and three inches in height. And then the apple right now is sitting at 4.458 by 5.389. Now, we're not going to keep these sizes. This is just so we can, you know, design and see what we're doing here. All right. So we're going to click in the white space and drag over both the apple and the heart. And we are going to click, go to the menu and click align and put center horizontally. We just want to make sure that the apple is in the center of the, the heart is in the center of the apple. Okay. All right. So that's done. And what we're going to have to do is there's an extra layer here and you can only slice two layers at a time. So here on the right side are your layers panels. So you have one layer, two layers, three layers. OK, so we're going to have to hide one of these layers. And that's because if you don't hide that layer, then you will not be able to use the slice functionality. So I'm hiding one of the layers and I chose to hide the um, red one because the black one, um, you know, this red one has kind of like an outline on it and I don't want that. So we only have two layers now that are in our apple. So we can take this one and we can really delete it because there's no need for it. So now we have one layer and two layers. And you don't have to worry about the fact that this apple is brown because this isn't going to dictate what color I'm going to be cutting it out on, okay? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and highlight both of them again. And then in the bottom right corner, that very first icon is a slice, okay? So we're gonna click that. And now you have your slice results here on the right-hand side. This is the easiest way to go in and to determine which one you want to use. We want the one that has the heart cut out of the apple. So we know this is not it. So we're just going to click on that layer and I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard. And we also don't want just the plain heart. So we're going to click on that layer and click delete on the keyboard. Now we have our apple that we're going to be using for our earring. Now we have to get that little hole um, to hold our uh, the metal our metal pieces for our earring, okay, to bring it all together. So we're gonna go back to um, the left side here. We're gonna click on shapes, and we're just gonna take a circle here, and then we're just gonna drag that in. Just drag it in, and we are going to get it small here. And I like to put my circle on white and that way I can see it better when I move it over to my apple. So I have my circle at 0 0.153 by 0 0.153. And we're gonna take that baby and we're gonna put it where we can put our metal piece. So I kind of got it right in that little center of the top opening there, okay? You don't want to get too close because you don't want to risk cutting out, you know, the little thingy. So that's nice there. So now we have two layers. Remember, you can only have two layers, not one, not more than two, okay, to use slice. So now we're just going to click and drag to highlight both layers. Or you can click one layer, hit shift on your keyboard 
and then click the second layer and that will highlight them both, okay? Either one will work. For me, it's just easier to do that, okay? Now that we have both of them selected, we're gonna come back down to the bottom right, that very first icon, and we're gonna slice, okay? And that's gonna now, um, when you look here on the right side where your layers are, we don't want just the white dot, so we're gonna click on that layer and delete it. And we don't want just a little brown dot, so we're gonna click on that layer and we're gonna delete it. And now we have our earring, guys. And you can take this and you can bring it up and size it however you so choose. Now, I don't want mine that small, so I think a three by three would be cute. So I'm gonna try three by three. And actually, you see how my lock proportions is locked? When I change this to three, it's automatically gonna change the height to make it height and width proportionate, okay? Height and width proportionate. Whereas if I unlock it and I type in, you know, three, it doesn't dictate what's going to be the proportions for the height. So then I have the ability to go in and say, no, I want three by three. That's what I want, okay? And then it kind of smushes the apple in a little bit, So, um, but that's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. You can still tell it's an apple with a heart. So now I would go back and just relock my proportions and that way I have control over everything here and it all looks good. So now we're just gonna click and duplicate. Now, I don't know why it worked that time, didn't work last time. And just to make you feel better, we're gonna go in, we're gonna change the color here. And we're just gonna go red. Okay, so there is our apple and they are three by three in size. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna print, we're gonna cut this in the faux leather and we're gonna cut out two sides for the um for the uh htv and that way we can put the htv on the front and the back and the faux leather uh, will actually be in the middle so you will not see the faux leather once we're done everything is said and done because you're going to have the htv on both sides and i say glitter but i'm not using glitter vinyl um it's more kind of like a sparkly um razzle dazzle i don't know um but i'll link where i purchased this vinyl from in the description i get it from a place here called aviva warehouse in dallas texas all right and uh, i mean you know some people like to flip their second earring so that you know it's like that it's totally up to you um how you do it but the end result is going to be the same okay um, because the earring will easily go from one side to the other side. So it'll move, you know, on its own anyway. All right. So at this point, guys, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, get ready to make this baby. So we're going to go ahead and click on make it. And we're going to click on unmat, continue. And then I always like to kind of bring my images a little bit down from that top left corner where Cricut likes to stick it. And, um, you know, so I kind of move mine over a little bit. You don't have to duplicate anything here. Everything is good to go. Um, so we're going to use this same thing to cut both our faux leather and also our HTV. So you don't have to duplicate this. Now, if you want to make multiple earrings, then, you know, with the apple, uh, then you can do so, but I'm just going to make one pair of earrings. So this is going to be it for me. So at this point, I'm going to click on, um, oh Lord, I checked, I picked the apple that cost me money. Oh my God. I was looking at this to see why is it saying checkout. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to see how much they want to charge me for this I believe it's the apple. It may be the heart, but let me just see. Do, 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 do. Um, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and let's see here. Image info. Um, instead of re-looking for it. So anytime you upload an image into Cricut Design Space, I mean, you're using images from Cricut Design Space, you can click on the layer 
and then click and select image info and it'll give you the information here. So here's the apple. It's 99 cents. And I would not have selected that when I have all these free apples out here. But since I'm here, I'm in it to win it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it. All right. So I'm going to click cancel. So anytime I'm going to hit make it. Anytime you select something that costs that's not a part of your free subscription, uh, this is not going to say continue. It's going to say check out. And anytime you see check out, that's to let you know you chose an image or a font or something like that that costs money. Okay. So I'm going to hit check out because I don't want to have to do this all over. <clears throat> and I don't even know. I guess they got my right credit card. So I'm going to hit authorize. It says my order was successfully processed. Now it goes from ch uh, check out to continue. And I guess this was good for you guys to see for those that are new to Cricut Design Space so that you'll know. I wasn't even paying attention because most of the time I click on free images. So I have the subscription. So most of the time I click on free images and I'm cautious not to select images that I pay for. But anyway, water under the bridge. Now we're going to click on continue. Da, 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 da. And then at this point, Cricut's going to come up. It's going to ask you what kind of material are you cutting? So we're going to click on um, I have my own setting for this faux leather because I've used it before, but you would just click on browse all materials and then in the search field, you would type in, you know, faux and search and then it's going to give you these different options. So based on whichever one you're cutting, that's the one you want to choose. Since mine is paper thin and I don't want it to chop it up, I created my own setting for my faux leather, what works best for me. And I have it here as a favorite. So I'm just going to select that. And we're not going to have anything in clamp A. We have our fine point blade that we're going to be using to cut this faux leather. And we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to come up on screen here so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, guys, here we are. This is the faux leather that I'm going to be using. And it's really thin, so that's why I created my own setting. You can see I've already cut your rings out, and they cut out perfectly, as you can tell, because there's nothing ripped here. Um, so I'm going to line this up, and you always want to make sure that your leather is on the um, suede or, um, I'm going to say, um, not the leather side. The leather side, you want it down on the mat. And normally, you would use your pink mat. So let me look up here in my mat of mat <laughs> and see if my pink mat is up here. It's behind all my mats because it's the one I use the least. <sighs> see all these mats? I have them hanging up and I highly recommend that you do that. That way you don't have them all over the place. And since normally I'm sitting right here when I'm crafting, I like to uh, just grab my mat from right up here. I just have a little nail with all my mats hanging up. And I need to clean my blue one. All right, so we're going to take and we're going to put our um, faux leather on our mat. And I'm going to use a little bit of tape to hold it in place, even though it does have the stickiness to it. But, you know, better safe than sorry, right? So I'm just going to take a little bit of tape here and use this tape that I've already. And remember, we moved our images down. So we don't have to worry about it being at the very top um, left corner. And we're only going to put enough um, tape on here just to hold the side, the top and the bottom sides in place. And I'll show you what I mean here. So that's all I'm going to do. It's just like that. Okay. Um, the, the HTV that I'm going to be using is this, which I think is really, really pretty. Hopefully you guys can see the little sparklies in there. I thought it was 
really be fitting for this project because we're doing an apple. So it kind of looks more like a candy apple, um, which I think is going to be cute. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to place this in our Cricut. So I'm going to turn this around here so you can see my Cricut mica over there. And my Cricut is ready. So I'm going to go ahead and um, load it by pressing the double arrows. And I'm going to take out, I had the deep point blade in there. So I'm going to take out the deep point. And I know it's the deep point because the deep point is a black blade. And I'm going to grab my fine point, which is your silver. Okay. Um, actually, that wasn't even the fine point. I thought I had it in my hand or in here. Hold on one second. I have so many blades, guys. There we go. There's our fine point, fine point blade. All right. Before I use my blade, I like to push it up and just make sure that there's no material on it so that we can get a clean cut, which you definitely need when you're working with your faux leather. So we're going to go ahead and insert that. And now I'm going to press the Cricut logo so that it will go ahead and start the cut. The cut. Okay. All right. So this is not going to take very long, guys. So um, the faux leather I ordered off of Amazon. I'll link where um, who the supplier was for this faux leather. Um, I'll link that in the description. And then this HTV, like I said, I got this HTV um, at Aviva Warehouse. I like to get their vinyl because you can get the, you know, just pick out the long sheets of whatever color. And if you've never, if you live in Texas and you've never been to Aviva Warehouse, um, I would highly recommend, I don't know, my lighting is great. There we go. I would highly recommend that you go because there, you're going to lose your mind <laughs> when you go into the, to the vinyl shop. You're going to lose your mind. Oh my God. It pulled up and I wasn't even paying attention. It's going to stop my machine. Okay, hold on one second, guys. So it automatically <laughs> cut, but the way it was cutting, it was like coming up from the uh, from the mat. So I thought it was cutting up my leather, but it wasn't. So there we have it. <laughs> I was about to go crazy. Okay, because normally we're paying attention. Isn't that going to be cute? We're paying attention to this and not talking, but I wasn't paying attention. So <clears throat> here we have it. And these are our two little middle pieces. That was the heart. I'm going to keep these because you just never know, right? You just never know. And I'm not going to reuse this mat because it's for material. Your pink mat is for fabric, okay? So for those of you that don't know, your pink mat is for fabric. Um, I'm not sure if you can use fabric on the Explore. Um, it's normally a maker thing. That was why I purchased the maker. But normally your pink mat is for fabric. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put this back on top and hang it back up. And that way it's out of your way. And you don't have to worry about that. But let me get my green mat down. Because now I'm going to use my green mat for my um, HTV. So, all right, hold on. mats at one time. All right, there we go. All right, so now we're going to cut our HTV. The good thing about this is all we have to do is load our HTV. 
and put this right back in the machine. Your HTV is gonna go shiny side down. Shiny, shiny side down. So give me one second here. All right, there we have it. So shiny side down. Just like that, okay? So the color is gonna be on the opposite side. And we're just gonna take, because my machine is still flashing, um, all I have to do is load it. And we're gonna hit the C for the Cricut logo. And the only difference is I'm gonna change my material because now I'm cutting um, not faux leather. So I'm just gonna go back to um, change the, you just click on the little down arrow next to the material in Cricut Design Space. And when I use this vinyl, I don't select vinyl. And that's because I wanna make sure that it cuts. And sometimes the cut, you can't really see it. So. When I use this vinyl, I always select medium cardstock so I can make sure that it cuts, okay? And I don't put it on any additional pressure and I am ready to go. All right, so I will tell you that. Do change your material setting from the faux leather to whatever material you're now cutting. That's the only difference but you don't have to do anything else in design space. All righty, let me poke my little hole out. On this one, what does it look like a little hole? All right, so I gotta make sure I got my hole here. There we go. So that was what it was doing is it was um, when the fabric moved, it didn't cut the hole all the way, but that's fine because I have a hole puncher and it's a very tiny one. So I'm going to use it to get my little hole going here. I'm just trying to make sure I have it on the right side. See this one. It did the whole, but this one, when the fabric moved, when I stopped the video, it um, it shifted my hole. So I'm just gonna go in and punch my own little hole. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't interfere. There we go. So there I have me a hole now that I punch with my hole puncher and I'm going to line both of these up and I'm going to punch again and that way I have them in the same place so that um these are going to be so cute now some people use their small uh little iron or whatever to do their earrings because it doesn't require a lot of pressure so to speak so now i have a hole in both sides in the same place and i'm not really worried about it on the vinyl because i know the vinyl ain't gonna fail me all right so we've cut our vinyl and we're gonna have to if you want to do double-sided you want to make sure that you do this twice because you're gonna need 
um, one for the front side, one for the back side, okay? So we're gonna put this back in and let it cut again, or you can just double your, um, double it in the machine. All right, so I'm just gonna cut here. And the reason I said I put this on cardstock is it's easy to see where your cuts are and it cuts the first time. This vinyl right here, if you just put it on vinyl, I'm gonna tell you now, so if you ever buy it, if you just put it on vinyl, um, you're not gonna be able to see where your cuts are and it doesn't really cut through the first go round. So that's why I put it on medium cardstock. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna weed this. And basically for those that are new, weeding is just removing the excess part that you're not gonna be um, using. And actually I'm gonna cut these down cause I'm gonna need it. And so I can see my cuts perfectly because I use the setting of medium card stock. And it did not cut through the plastic part, okay? So you don't have to worry that that pressure is too much. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna weed this. And that's basically taking away the excess vinyl. So watch how smoothly this cuts. For those of you that have tried this vinyl before, it was like, it is a headache to work with. It is not. All you gotta do is put it on medium card stock and watch how easy this weaves. Like butter, baby. Okay, so we have our apple shape there. Now we're gonna take out the inside for the part. And I might need to get a new weeding tool. I probably don't kill this one after seven years. <laughs> that little it is like, Doris, please. Now we have the inside. Apple. All this is going to be so, these are going to be so pretty. And then we're going to pick out, weed out where our little hole is. And we got that. And so basically what you would do is put that on top of your faux leather. And then heat press it or iron it on or however you're going to place it on. So I have my faux leather, and then I'm gonna take and put my HTV on top. Just like that. Just make sure it's lined up, guys, because you don't want it to not be lined up properly. So that's gonna be our earring there. And I'm gonna get my other one set up. And while I do the other one, I'm going to have the other or the back side setting out. Okay, so we'll hold that right there. And we're gonna put this back in and we're gonna let it cut our other, our back side. So all we have to do is put it right back in the machine. All right, so while that one is cutting, I'm gonna go ahead and weed the second earring. I think they call this like holographic or something like that um, at Aviva Warehouse. I'm going to double check it. But like I said, I'm going to link it for you anyway in the description. And if you only want to have the HTV on one side, totally up to you. You can do that too. You don't have to put it on both sides. 
I just think it looks nicer um, when it is on both sides. Okay. Then let me take out the, don't forget to take out your little middle pieces. And guys, this would be the perfect gift when you're gifting those teachers. This would be the perfect, the perfect gift. So once I heat press one side, then we'll take the other side and heat press it. I don't have this lined up properly, but just to give you an idea, that's what your earring is going to look like. You're going to have the HTV on both sides. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get this one ready. And you're not going to heat press at the same time, you know, the front and the back. But you'll you can do both your rings at the same time. Front, front, back, back. <laughs> it's normally best to weed when you have it sitting on your mat. So what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to cut out what I need. And <coughs> remove the other part of the vinyl that I'm not using. All right, and then I can put this back down on the mat to make it easier to weed, because that's normally how you would weed with your image still on the mat. <clears throat> and I could have did a better job with making this even smaller. And sometimes you just need a little piece of HTV, and it's no sense in, um, you know, wasting. Let's not be wasteful, especially in this day and time. Guys, save what you can. Save what you can. There we have both apples out. Now we're going to take out the heart in the middle. Always keep a little trash can right by your working area because otherwise you're going to have a mess on your hand with vinyl and stuff, excess that you're not using. And all right, we got that, and we're gonna now get ready to go to the heat press. So I'm gonna stop this here and then have you join me at the heat press. All right, guys, we got our earrings lined up. Um, with the it's actually hologram, the hologram HTV on top of the faux leather. And I have this um, actually set, I think it's at 300 for 10 seconds, okay? And hold on one second. I'm just going to, I like to put a piece of paper on top. top and we're going to press it for 10 seconds all right and we're going to take our clear plastic up 
off. Just like that. So that's the front side. Now we're going to do the other side. All right. So now we got that side done. We're going to flip her over and we're going to line up the vinyl now with the back side. Make sure you get it nice and even so that your apple is not looking all wonky. All right, that's one. And we're going to do the other one. Get it lined up. Now do keep in mind that your HTV, um, it does shrink when you pre press it. So it may be just a tiny bit like it's not looking like it's lined up, but you're good. Trust me. All right. So there's our backside now. And we are going to press. This going to look like it shifted. Don't one second. There we go. That's better. And we're going to press another 10 seconds. Now you can use your iron or your little small um, easy press to do this as well. You don't have to use the big old heat press. For me, I like to use my heat press because I don't have to worry about do I have the pressure right? Do I have the temperature right? Um, I know I have it right when I have it on my heat press. So that's the reason I do it on my heat press. And then we're going to remove the plastic. And there we have it. And I'm going to trim that just a little bit but beautiful and sturdy. So I'm just gonna peel the plastic off of this one, just like that. And then we're gonna go back over and we're gonna put our metal pieces in, trim them up and put our metal pieces in. All right, guys, so we have our apples now, both heat pressed on both sides. So we're now going to take and we're gonna put our um, metal pieces on and let me get my needle nose pliers to help me out here so we're just gonna take and we're gonna open up our little metal piece here just by oops I really opened that one up I didn't mean to do that okay there we go open that up and then you're going to take and put your metal piece through the little hole in your leaf part top leaf part of your apple and close it and there you have it okay so we're going to do the same thing with the other one now, if you find that you have um, a little bit of, because remember, HTV shrinks when you heat it. So if you have any little areas that are overlapping, I just take my fabric scissors and I just kind of go around the apple a little bit so I can see a little bit of silver right here. So I'm just going to take my scissors and just very gently go around it and clip that and I 
Okay, there we go. Nice and tidy, nice and tidy. And now we're going to take and put our metal piece in. This is not my normal needle nose pliers that I use. Because these babies, they open that apple up. I almost thought it broke the metal part, but it didn't. Ain't odd. All right, and there we have it. Our apple earrings. Give me one second. I'm going to put them on something here so you can see them. So there's one. And there's two. So there they are. Your apple heart earrings. Double sided with the HTV. So you don't see any sign of the faux leather. The faux leather is on the inside, which is helping these to be very sturdy. They're still very lightweight, okay? But it's just the faux leather on the inside, all right? All right, guys, so to make this project, all you're going to need to make this project is just your faux leather. Your faux leather, I will um, link where I got mine from Amazon, the supplier I got mine from Amazon. You're going to need that. And then whatever HTV, you could use HTV, you can use glitter HTV. Um, I just decided to use this hologram because I thought it was really pretty and it's really going to sparkle in that sun outside. Um, and then um, I press these, let me get the right pressure here because I pulled it up in a Viva, on a Viva site. So I press these at 320 actually, 320 for 10 seconds, 320 for 10 seconds. And I had um, kind of like medium pressure because we want to make sure that there's nothing open on the sides here. And like I said, once you press it the first time, it's going to shrink your HTV. So you may have to do just a little bit of cleanup on the ends, but nothing major. Okay. Um, but press them. And like I said, you can use the easy press. Um, you can use an iron. Either one will work. You just want to make sure that you get that heat up high enough that your HTV um, sticks to your faux leather and that you don't have anything buckling up on or opening up on the sides. So you can't even tell, guys. Look how thin that is. You can't even tell that the faux leather is in there, but it is. You guys saw me do it. Okay, so there you have it. Um, what else can I tell you? I think that's pretty much it. You want to make sure that you use your pink mat and use some tape at the top and on the left side. You can move your images down a little bit so that it's not in that top upper left corner. Um, and what else? Um, make sure the fall leather is on the leather side to the mat. Okay. Um, and then the non leather side is going to be facing you and then your HTV shiny side down facing the mat and the dull side is going to be facing you. Um, make sure that when you go back in to cut your HTV that you make sure you change the fabric setting or the material setting in Cricut Design Space because I went from faux leather to um, I actually said cardstock for this hologram because if you cut this hologram vinyl on just a vinyl setting you're not going to be able to see where your cuts are and so you're going to basically tear up your um htv vinyl you're going to tear up your vinyl trying to figure it out so i put mine i have a cricut maker and i just put mine on medium cardstock and you saw how it cut perfectly i could see where my lines were it weeded with no problem so if you've ever had problems with the hologram vinyl that's why because you're probably using that final setting and I had to learn the hard way so that's why I'm sharing it with you all right all right guys that's it that's all that I can think of if you're currently in my Facebook group I want to thank you guys so much for following me on Facebook if you would like to join my group which is a closed group you can send a Facebook group request to the group it is a private group like I said and the group name is Candoris Creek Candoris's Cricket and Creative Crafters and then if you are currently subscribed to my YouTube channel, I always want to thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for showing your love and support via YouTube. 
And if you're not subscribed and you like my method of teaching, then please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. And I have over 350 video tutorials on my playlist and on YouTube teaching you all different types of crafts, not just cricket stuff, some non-related cricket stuff. I mean, it's it's a lot. Just go look and and I'm sure you're going to find something that will help you. Okay. All right, guys, you know, my motto is each one reach one so that each one can teach one. And that teacher's going to think she's the that um, she's the apple of your eye. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Bye.